Hey kiddos, here's a video going through uh, the third part of the review, which is based on definition of the derivative. Uh, the first thing that I know is that the definition derivative, uh, and I've got h and 0 is going on. So we're using the standard one, the limit is h approaches 0, of f of x plus h, minus f of x, and then that's over x plus h minus x, my x's cancel out, leave me with just an h. Uh, I like writing it that way so that I remember this is just a slope. Um, but I'm going to look for the one that is uh, most uh, initial-like. Um, and then we're also plugging in a point. Uh, it looks like we're plugging in 3. So we're doing x equals 3 for this problem. Okay, um, and looking at this, we've got uh, a definition of derivative. That's probably going to be my first step. Uh, I don't love uh, writing it like this. I, I'd rather plug the x's and then plug the number in after, but that's okay. Um, and then I guess we got to figure out what function we're using, and that appears to be down here, so I'd say that's step number two. Once we get here, we got to do some simplifying, um, and you might notice there's a step called begin simplifying. That's going to be our third one. Uh, then they distribute, and we use a word here that I'm not going to use. You can see that I did not make this because I would never use that word. Uh, so then we got step four, and once we are here, we're probably going to combine some stuff. In other words, collect like terms. So that's going to be step five. Um, we're probably going to do from here, factor an h out of the top. Okay. That's going to be six. Then my h's can cancel out. So there's seven. And finally, you're left with just uh, an 11 when you plug in zero for h. So that's going to be step eight. For the second one of these, uh, we're doing the same thing um, and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and looking at this, we're using the same definition of derivative. Uh, so that's why this would be the first step. Uh, and the h approaching negative 2 part would be the issue in this one. Um, if that were x approaches negative 2, we could use the alternative definition for a derivative which is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Uh, and that'll work for us as well, but that's not what they're doing here. All right, so once we do this, we're going to plug in our function. Um, and looking at the difference between the two of these, we got some pluses and minuses towards the end. My bet is that the minus 14 is what we're going after here. Um, because if I plugged in negative 2 to that function, uh, I get 12 minus negative 2 is 14. So if we're doing minus f of negative 2, it should be minus 4. Right, plus or minus in that part to about what's wrong there. Uh, okay, then we're doing some multiplying out, and we've got to rewrite negative 2 plus h times negative 2 plus h, and then multiply those together, giving us something that looks like this. Uh, what went wrong there is that they distributed the squared instead of actually multiplying it out. Uh, we got to collect some terms next. So in looking at this, uh, we should have 12 minus 12h and then plus 3h squared. They didn't distribute there. Um, so the 3 has to be distributed to all of those pieces. 
we got to collect some terms. Um, 12 and 2 and minus 14 cancel out, so there should not be any number left there. Um, I'm going to say that they added wrong for that. Going from here, we're going to factor out an H and perhaps cancel it out. Um, but we're also going to combine some things. Uh, you also just can't cancel things like that. So when we do this, uh, I'm going to say can't illegal. Because you can't just cancel out one piece of, an, of a numerator with a denominator. Not a way that works. Uh, only if you're multiplying between them. Now what you have to do is then factor that h out. So then when you can cancel those out, uh, you are good to go. Um, and on this side, they just get rid of the limit for some reason. Because they're cray. Okay, uh, so we've got 3h minus 13. Um, we still need the limit there. Uh, because we haven't plugged it in yet. So then we plug 0 and we get minus 13 as our answer. Uh, minus 10h, I'm just going to say is awkward math. Awkward, because you can't see the w because I put it in the same space as the A. For number three, we're going to find F prime of four. Um, they're really loving this. Plug in the four in it first, so I guess I'll kind of go along with that. Uh, so it's going to be the square root of four plus H minus uh, the square root of, and I'm totally in the wrong step, so I'm going to erase some stuff, call this 4 plus h minus f of 4. Um, so we're looking at uh, square root of 4 plus h minus the square root of 4 over h, uh, they're multiplying by conjugates to make this nicer for us. Uh, I'm going to keep the bottom just kind of messy. And when we do that, we get 4 plus h plus 2. Okay. Uh, 4 plus h times 4 plus h in square roots is going to be 4 plus h. My middle terms are going to cancel out leaving with just the last terms of minus 4, and that's where those pieces cancel out. Um, when this happens, our h's go away, and we're left with the... I like that I'm getting way ahead of myself. Because that's clearly that step and that step together. What I was about to say is this is going to be 1 because, sorry, it's going to be h because the 4s cancel out. Now the h's cancel out, leaving us with 1. And then we've got 4 plus 0 when I plug the limit in. Uh, and then we get 1 over 2 plus 2 is 1 over 4. leading us to the place where we can find this definition by derivative. Um, and when we do that, we get the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, I'll, I guess I'll use their stuff, 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. So when we plug our function in, we get the limit as h approaches 0, 7 times 2 plus h squared, plus 5 times 2 plus h, minus and f of 2, 
7 times 4 is 28, plus 20 would be a 48, so we got minus 48 going on here, and that's all over h. So the limit as h approaches 0, we're going to have 7 times 4 is 28, 2 times 8 times 2 is going to be 4h, so plus 28h, and then plus 7h squared. That's for that first part. Then we're going to have plus 10 plus 5h, and then minus 48. And in my head, I just had a realization that 10 times 2 is definitely not 20. Uh, this should be 38, and that means this should be 38 as well. That's important because when I jump to the next step, the limit as h approaches 0, well, my 28s and 10 minus 38 cancel out. Uh, also, 28 plus 5 is going to be 33h plus 7h squared over h. Uh, I'm going to be good mathematician, Mr. Carlson, and uh, factor out an h instead of just canceling stuff. Now cancel those h's, and I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 33 plus 7h, which is 33. You check that with the power rule to make sure that you, to make sure you got the right answer. And in this case, you didn't delete it. Okay, same thing for this one. Um, I've got the limit as h approaches zero, not six. That's what it looked like. Uh, of f of three plus h, so that would be one over three plus h minus f of 3, so 1 over 3, all over h. Um, I'm going to multiply this entire thing by 3 times 3 plus h over 3 times 3 plus h. Uh, the reason being, and that's going to let me get rid of some denominators and make this a nicer problem. So we get 3 times 3 plus h over 3 plus h, those cancel out, minus 3 times 3 plus h over 3, those cancel out, over h times 3 times 3 plus h, and this is the limit as h approaches 0. Um, okay, so that's the limit as h approaches 0 of 3, and then minus... 3 plus h, that's really minus 3 minus h. My 3's cancel out. And the bottom we've got uh, h times 3 times 3 plus h. So when I take a look at this, my h's are going to cancel out. Leaving me with negative 1 on top. And if I plug 0 in for h, we get 3 times 3, which is 9 on the bottom. All right, and the last part of this. Uh, again, we're starting with the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 4 plus h. So we've got... 2 over the square root of 4 plus h minus f of 4, uh, which is going to be 2 over 4 square root, which is 2. Nice. And then on the bottom, we're going to have just an h. Okay, uh, kind of like I did in the last one. Um, it's going to take two steps, which is going to be kind of annoying. But I'm going to start by multiplying by that denominator. Um, just so that I end up with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 minus the square root of 4 plus
plus h over h times the square root of 4 plus h. Um, the problem here is that we still have 0 over 0 when we try to reduce this. Now I'm going to multiply by conjugates, so that's going to be 2 plus the square root, 4 plus h, over 2 minus the square 2 plus the square root, sorry, of 4 plus h. So the limit is h approaches 0. When we do this on top, we get 4 minus 4 plus h is quantity. And on the bottom, we're going to have a whole mess of things going on here. Uh, h times the square root of 4 plus h times 2 plus the square root of 4 plus h. Okay, uh, 4 minus 4 leaves me with negative h on top. My h's cancel, leaves me with negative 1 on top. And if I plug 0 in for h, we get negative 1. And at the bottom, we get square root of 4, which is 2, times 2 plus the square root of 4 is 2. So negative 1 over 8, it looks like. Not too bad.